This is the highest point on Earth, Mount Chimborazo. Because of the Earth's irregular shape, its peak is over 6,000 feet closer to space than Mount Everest. So today, I'm going on a 10-day journey attempting to climb it and see what it's like at the highest points on Earth. But here's our first problem. Most deaths on climbing expeditions are caused by the body literally shutting down due to the lack of oxygen as you increase in altitude. And because Chimborazo has 50% less oxygen than sea level, we needed to work our way up through different mountain summits so my body can adjust, starting on Pasachoa. Mount Pasachoa is a 14,000 foot volcano, and because it doesn't require as much gear compared to future peaks, climbing it would be great preparation for the highest points on Earth. Let's get it, gents. We began our ascent up the trail, step by step taking in less oxygen than before. Climbing with me was Joaquin, our lead guide, 77 year old Don Healy, who is the first person to summit Mount Everest with a hip replacement. And there's your boy here, barely any climbing experience, and relying on these two men to keep me alive. This is like light work for you though, right? Damn, this is my holiday day section. We went through trees and ridge sides while the trail kept getting smaller and more wet from the incoming rain. But with the summit now somewhat visible, we needed to get to the top to have any chance on Chimborazo. Mud pit right here. Oh my gosh! I definitely was starting to feel the altitude at this point, but after four hours of climbing, Joaquin led us into the clouds where we were on our final push for the summit. We're almost there, done. Done. This is it. Yes. If on a scale of one to ten, this compared to Chimborazo, <laughs> is this like a one or two? <laughs> While this was a slightly tiring hike with a, a small possibility of tumbling down hundreds of feet, compared to Chimborazo, it was literally child's play. With that, we had caught our first W, and now it was time to focus on our next step towards the highest point on Earth, Ilaniza Norte. Coming in at almost 17,000 feet tall, Ilaniza Norte is without a doubt a more challenging but necessary climb, and while driving to the trailhead, I could finally see how big it actually was. This is bonkers, fellas. Wait, 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 Dom, what were you saying? There's people that die up there a lot? Yeah, Google it. Unlike Pasachoa, people have actually died climbing Ilaniza, but on Chimborazo, more people have died, so in my eyes, we were making progress. As we trekked through these really nice meadows, we could see the ridge we needed to reach by the end of the day, where we'd also find a cabin to sleep in and push for the summit at 3am tonight. Completely out of my comfort zone, but with how things were going so far, this would be an easy climb. I think this is the hardest one so far. It looked and felt like we were walking in a desert down here, but if you look up on the mountain, there was literally snow. Anyways, after another 4 hours of trekking through heat exhaustion, we finally reached the 5 star hotel where we would recover for tonight's push. People are sleeping, we'll have to be a little quiet. In here. here is my bed. That's about it. Let me just say that night sleeping next to 20 different people snoring at once might have just been the best 15 minutes of sleep in my life. <laughs> 2 30 a.m. I was feeling the altitude, sleep deprived, just really shits, and was about to do one of the hardest climbs I had ever done in my life. It was cold and dark, I was tired, but I knew that making it through this would prepare us and give hope for reaching the highest point on Earth. As Joaquin, Don, and I climbed over rock after rock, I realized I underestimated this climb due to how rugged it actually was. Luckily, the sun was starting to come up on the horizon, and we began to approach a small resting spot to admire the most beautiful view I had ever seen. Wow. Let's go. Holy! Still gotta make it to the true summit though. We couldn't let the view mask what was still ahead though, as things were getting much more riskier going up in altitude and the trail was getting much more dangerous. This is probably where the people on Google die. Literally a straight drop down. If one of us were to fall due to disbalance or fatigue, we could all be roped down with them. Roped into each other, we traveled from ridge to ridge, climbing steep rocks for hours until we were finally nearing our way to the summit. This is insane. At 17,000 feet, our bodies were now getting more adjusted to the lack of oxygen, getting ready for Chimborazo, which for the first time I could actually see from where we stood, and it was massive. Carefully, we went all the way back to the parking lot, and now there was only one more mountain between us and the highest point on Earth, that being Kayambe. 
At 19,000 feet tall, Kayambe was only 1,500 feet shorter than Chimborazo, making it a vital climb for our bodies to adjust to the lack of oxygen. It was going to be more challenging, risky, and taller than what we've done, and as we arrived at the refuge where we'd push for the summit at midnight, I saw what we were going up against. Damn. That's the summit up there, no way. That is our next step right there, to climbing to the highest point on Earth. Unlike Ilaniza's refuge, Kayambe's was actually pretty decent. It had separate beds, a decent sized cafeteria, and, and of course- Here's the bathroom, it's uh, pretty nice. The weather conditions looked great, I looked great, even dawn felt great, and we went to bed that afternoon, ready to wake up at midnight to get one step closer to achieving our goal. Overnight, the weather had completely turned on us. Incredibly fast wind speeds, literally lightning striking all around us that could actually hit us. Going out in these conditions would 100% be a death sentence. It's not just because the wind or because yeah. the cold, it's, it's because the you can die. Yeah. So we waited for the slight possibility that things would clear up. With our time window to start climbing about to close, me and McKean went out one last time to see if climbing Kayambe would even be possible. It's a little breezy out here. You can barely see. I think I got even more. With that, we headed back to safety in the refuge, knowing that now we would have to fill an untouched 4,000 elevation gap to climb Chimborazo, which would make it much, much harder. Chimborazo. At 20 and a half thousand feet tall in its location on the equator, climbing to the top of it would mean we have reached the closest possible point to space. Although we were at a severe disadvantage from not adjusting to higher altitude on Kayambe, we could not lose hope. Today, we just needed to make it to the high base camp. Then at midnight, we'd push for the summit. Dang. As we headed for the base camp, it looked like a different planet out here, and although the weather was kinda gross, it wasn't anything to worry about, yet. A little bit of hail down there. than rain, I guess. Well, Keen, on a scale of 1 to 10, how tired are you feeling? Tired? Yeah. I swear, guides like Joaquin just do not feel pain, and we even had a new guy join our team named Manuel, and my man wasn't even wearing gloves, and it was cold. After what felt like hours moving over rocks, ridges, and eventually getting onto this massive glacier consisted of snow and ice, we finally reached the high base camp. Let's go. I genuinely felt like I was gonna throw up a little in some parts. Alright, so here's the camp. Definitely gotten a lot more hardcore than the nice... Bruh. My brain's not working. At a new high of 17,300 feet in altitude, I had a headache, slowness of thoughts, nausea, and no appetite. All odds you're gonna be going up against once you enter altitude like this. With the weather now starting to look good for our climb, at 6 p.m. I went to bed, hoping I'd start to feel better, ready to give tonight everything I've got. I feel like I'm actually gonna throw up. If you feel sick, if you feel dizzy, that's it. I must come back because the rest of the, the travelers, you have 300 meters to fall. I wanted to sit this one out so badly, but I didn't come this far just to stop here. I needed to get to the top of the world. Let's do this. We set out up the cold, dark, and quiet glacier, with Manuel leading in the front. With the steep ice we were traversing on, this was already harder than any of the previous climb, and seeing what was ahead looming down on us made it even worse. Let's get it, gents. We were making steady progress up the icy mountain, but unfortunately Don and Joaquin had to untie from us to slow down a bit. So now it was just me, Manuel, and a few distant climbers working our way up the steep icy slopes that Joaquin was warning me about. Yes. Four hours in at this point, I had probably burned thousands of calories and because of how I felt earlier, I had only eaten a singular piece of bread so far. Can we take a second? I would move a hundred feet, then have to stop for a break. I want to get there so bad. Then I'd stop every 50 feet. 
I go so slow. I'm gonna get frostbite on my hands. I don't want to uh, stop in two minutes or five minutes, okay? I always believe you have something to give no matter how you feel. There's always something left. I just need to move one more step at a time. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Let's go back now. We go back. At 19 and a half thousand feet, just a thousand away from the highest point on earth, I turned back out of fear I wouldn't be able to make it down with how little fuel I had left. Honestly, this was the worst feeling of failure I've ever experienced, and I seriously thought that I had trained hard enough to be able to make it. And after, I just could not stop questioning myself about if I had more in me and all the things that I could have done better. While difficult, I've turned this energy into motivation, and everyone who subscribes today, I'm printing you all on a banner, and I will take you with me to the top of Mount Everest.